Dr. Harry Harlow's empirical work with primates, most particularly rhesus monkeys, is now considered a classic in behavioral science and has revolutionized our understanding of the role that social relationships play in early development. When Harlow was conducting his research in the 1950s and 1960s, psychology, at least in the United States, but generally all over the world, was dominated by behaviorists. The behavioral theory of attachment would suggest that an infant would form an attachment with a carer that provides food. Now, Harry and other social and cognitive psychologists argued that this perspective overlooked the importance of comfort, companionship, and love in promoting a healthy development. In 1958, Harlow separated infant rhesus monkeys from their mothers immediately after birth and placed them in cages with access to two surrogate mothers. One of these surrogate mothers was made out of wire and one was covered in a soft toweling cloth. The infant rhesus monkeys were assigned to one of two conditions. In the first condition, the wire mother had a milk bottle and the cloth mother did not. The second condition, the cloth mother had food while the wire mother had none. In both conditions, Harlow found that the infant and rhesus monkeys spent significantly more time with the cloth mother than they did with the wire mother. When only the wire mother had food, the babies came to the wire mother to feed and then immediately returned to cling on to the cloth surrogate mother. In both conditions, all the rhesus monkeys drank equal amounts and grew physically at the same rate. But the similarities end there. Monkeys who had the soft, tactile contact with their terry cloth surrogate mother behaved quite differently than monkeys whose mothers were made out of hard wire. Hollow observed behavioral differences between monkeys who had grown up with their surrogate mothers and those with their natural mothers. Some of these differences included that the surrogate raised monkeys were much more timid, they didn't know how to act with other monkeys. They were easily bullied and wouldn't stand up for themselves when placed with other monkeys. They had a difficult time mating and the females who were raised by surrogate mothers were themselves inadequate mothers. These behaviors were observed only in the monkeys who were left with a surrogate mother for more than 90 days. The rhesus monkeys that were raised with the surrogate mother less than 90 days, Hollow found that the effects could be reversed if placed in a normal environment where they could form attachments with other rhesus monkeys. However, those who were kept with the surrogate mothers for greater than 90 days, Harlow found that the social effects or the social impairments were largely irreversible. Harlow initially concluded that early maternal deprivation, i.e. being deprived of a mother, leads to emotional damage, but that its impact could be reversed in monkeys if an attachment was made before the end of what he called the critical period, that is that 90 day period. However, he argued that if maternal deprivation lasted after the end of the critical period, then no amount of exposure to the mothers or peers could alter the emotional and social damage that had already occurred. Later on, Harlow concluded that it was rather social deprivation rather than maternal deprivation that the young monkeys were suffering from. In another experiment, when he brought some other infant monkeys up on their own, but with 20 minutes a day in a playroom with three other monkeys, he found they grew up to be quite normal emotionally and socially. So while today these experiments would be considered completely unethical and for good reason, these were not even the worst out of the series of experiments that Harry Harlow did with rhesus monkeys. But the studies produced groundbreaking empirical evidence for the importance of the parent-child attachment relationship as well as the importance of early socialization with peers. Indeed, more than 70 years later, Harlow's discoveries continue to inform the scientific understanding of the fundamental building blocks of human behavior. So once again, grossly unethical studies have played an important part in building our understanding of human psychology. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and remember to like, subscribe and all that jazz. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.